Hi guys, welcome. I'm here with Steve Duda. He is, a, as you probably already know, artist, label owner, software programmer, educational coordinator and advisor here for uh, LearnToProduce.com Icon Collective. And the reason we've brought Steve in today is to show off a brand new plugin that he's developed, uh, which I think is going to help people in their songwriting process. Steve, can you tell us a little bit about what you put together? And let's start with why you created this plugin. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this plugin is called Cthulhu, and I started it uh, a couple of years ago, uh, just sort of mulling over the concept of that. It's hard to sometimes, even if you're a keyboard player, be able to explore different possibilities with chords um, and deal with rhythm at the same time in particular. But what I found as a person who studied classical piano and I took lessons for years, I started finding myself falling into patterns that are really comfortable. So essentially I was kind of always coming up with the same sorts of things based on how it felt, sticking to the keys that I knew, and nothing very inspiring wouldn't come out without work. And even when it did, I found it very hard to remember this thing and then switch to this other thing and right. try out different variations. So it sort of dawned on me in a sense of how about make something where you can take every key of the keyboard and assign it to a chord and then be able to play around with different chords kind of spontaneously. So this is something I sort of developed and uh, Deadmau5 added a little bit of his own kind of concept to it in graphics, uh, hence the name Cthulhu, and uh -huh. it's something that he's used on several uh, pieces and it's been sort of a bit of a secret weapon for us for kind of a couple of years coming up with sort of more interesting stuff harmonically than you necessarily would do in a piano role. It sort of, sort of streamlines the process and uh, m mostly what I'm most excited about is that it allows you to explore harmonic things that you may not even become fam be familiar with and allow you to come up with uh, stuff that will inspire you and that's sometimes the you know hardest part with making music is coming up with something that that's going to get you inspired and uh, in a sense to me what better way than with harmony to do that. So let's get started why don't we start we've seen that it's two plugs in, in one but let's start with the chord generator let's pull it up and then we'll just show pull up a classical uh, progression. And this is by uh, one of the Bach chorales, correct? Yeah, you can see there's all these Bach chorales that come with it. Um, so essentially these are, uh, you could think of as like MIDI files. They are these actual Bach chorales that Bach would write, I guess, one, one a week for Sunday Mass, and then it would be sung by, uh, by a choir. So you have four-part four harmony going on, the bass, the tenor, the alto, and soprano. So most of them are consisting of four notes at a time, happening. So each chord is uh, four voices going on. Four notes make up each chord. It's just so people understand, Cthulhu, when I hit a note, Cthulhu sends out MIDI information that can go to another synth and trigger it. We have right. that set up here. So let's go ahead and, and we'll show you how this is routed. But for right now, let's pull up a... Yeah, uh, so let's send this to another synth. So I'm going to turn off the speaker so we're not hearing Cthulhu as well. It's okay. still going to output its MIDI. I'm just going to unmute the soft synth we have. Okay. Uh, and so now when you hit a... So now let's find a couple of chords that might inspire us as the beginning, right? Sure. So I like that. That sounds cool. really musical, right? Yeah, that's cool. So we got nerve going for a beat, so let's just uh, record that in and Cthulhu will just capture the exact notes you're playing okay. on this track. Nice. Yeah, that sounds cool. Uh, let's get a little quantization on there. Maybe I'll wow, look at that timing. Oh yeah, this is pretty. Doesn't <laughs> doesn't need it. So um, there we go. We got um, four bar loop in there. Um, so I'll just set that to loop, and now we can play this back, and it should sound like you played it. <laughs> Of course, if we wanted to, we could experiment with variations. That's so awesome. Moving moving things around right here in the piano roll, and we're going to get a, a new chord out for anyone. Yeah, of let's do that. Let's play around with that just a little bit. Um, yeah, no idea what would happen. Let's just. Oh, that's the beauty of it. They're all diatonic. Right. 
right. So we are, it might be just really quick as an aside to go over the routing. Uh, sure. Because that's kind of what's happening here is in live we have Cthulhu, which shows up basically like an instrument because it essentially is an instrument. It takes MIDI notes in and then it has a test tone that's going to come out as an audio right. if you want. Uh, and then it also sends out MIDI simultaneously. So specific here to Ableton Live, we have this instrument rack that we're using to uh, was what we're hearing as sound. And you guys on this secondary track that's labeled instrument, this is where you would load in uh, third-party uh, VST such as Massive or Silent or Raw Pape In or any other kind of even one of the Ableton instruments. It doesn't really matter. So. What we've got, what, what Ableton has here is this uh, MIDI from area that shows up on any MIDI track. So there's a MIDI from that you normally see all ins as the default that's selected. Right. And what we've done here, uh, right before the video, is we set, uh, instead of receiving from all ins, we're receiving from a specific track. And it's this track one that track contains one, exactly. Cthulhu. So we're selecting track one. And then there's second rectangle that comes below, which is what from track one do we want this track to listen to? Do we want it to listen to post effects, which would just be the MIDI that's essentially coming into the track? Therefore, you'd only hear the single note. That's right. We would. We, so we're not hearing Cthulhu itself. We're, we'd just be hearing the single notes mm -hmm. would be getting played over here. But we want to tell it here to listen to Cthulhu. The actual plugin. So now it's taking, finally, it's taking MIDI from the Cthulhu track, and then we've told it take MIDI from the Cthulhu plugin. At that point, you're done. The only other thing you'd want to do is uh, turn monitor in if we're not record enabled on this destination track. That way Ableton knows to actually have the MIDI get to the plugin to make sound. So now what we can do, what we need to do if we want to record the Cthulhu chords, we have the MIDI coming in now, but right now we're just monitoring in. So we can see there's just stop buttons here and no record buttons. Mm -hmm. So we just need to record enable this track uh, so that this way we can record right here. Now you can see the record buttons and I will just click record here. And so can Cthulhu's playing this, and it's turning into chords here. Awesome. And so now, of course, we could edit this as well. So if we wanted, we're no longer using Cthulhu essentially at this point if we didn't want to be. Of course, there's no, it's so low CPU that it doesn't really cause any harm to just never print these chords if you're happy with it and always leave Cthulhu there if you want. So it's really up to you, but sometimes it's nice to just print and commit things. You get to see the handiwork and do any subtle changes that you might want to do. Like, exactly. Now, know. now imagine, guys, you, this is your harmonic blueprint for your track. So now you have this MIDI information. You could copy this to another track, remove MIDI notes, use the lower the lower notes for bass lines. You could uh, actually divide these group of notes over two instruments, have them play an alternating pattern with two different textures. This is basically your construction piece for your track. And this is probably one of the most difficult things that, that people struggle with in developing a song idea. Now let's show you guys a little bit of the features on the arpeggiator because it really takes, um, it can take your music ideas to the next level, so. Yeah, let's do something, why don't we first get some chords in that are more constant. That'll give us a more of a, a oh, yeah. foundation of uh, right. something to arpeggiate. These yeah. are these are so uh, short and staccato. Well, well one, of the, one of the things about Cthulhu is it has this library of chords, but it also allows you to record your own chords in there so that you can have your own ideas and play with those in a similar fashion, so. Okay, okay great, so I'm just gonna init that. I'm gonna just start on C, and it's learning, so we're ready to go. Okay, here's your first chord. Okay. On to the next one. Next one. Just cool. four simple chords. We can That's start great. with there. So we had the test tone going there too. I'll turn that off so it sounds a little nicer. Probably familiar with the, the traditional arpeggiator, which is uh, when you have a chord held, it's going to play the lowest note in the chord, followed by on the next step, it'll play the next note up in the chord, followed by the next note up. Once it runs out of notes, it starts back over and starts with the lowest note. So you get this up pattern of. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So that's what this represents. So if we hit play now, we'll hear that. Um. Now we can do the opposite, which is down, up and down, up and down, right? Down and up. <laughs> up plus down, we have the lowest note twice and the highest note twice. Or the inverse of that, starting with the high. Nice. Just consider the thumb. Every other note is the lowest note of the chord, and it's doing it up there and down go. otherwise. And the 
opposite, highest note every other time. Okay, so so far, so far this seems like a basic arpeggio. Any arpeggiator will do that, right? Pretty much. Not, but not all what, of them. But, but, here, yes. but here's where the magic happens, right? Because you can string these patterns together in different sequences. So right. maybe let's add one more step and show people how you would create two or three patterns of these uh, over a certain number of steps. Absolutely. So one, so one way here would be a simple one would be let's go up for the first half of this note because we're changing notes every half bar. Yeah. And let's go down for the second half. And for clarification, those first four points in the grid are sixteenth notes. These are sixteenth notes. I could slow down the clock and just be using yeah. two steps for this, but Got it. same idea here. So it starts going down here. If you wanted to really reset, there is a sort of advanced trick. If you want it to really start over every time. What command did you do? There's an option click. Okay, cool. Which just means that on this step, I want it on, on whatever step I select this on, I want the pattern to start over. So you could even, even if you had an up pattern go here, but you wanted it to start over here and here, you could do something like that. And it's sort of one of the many sort of pattern based features that you can do with this arpeggiator. You can get a lot of different rhythms out that way. Yeah, absolutely. You get your kind of custom. And of course you have all, I think it's maybe eight of those variations available for you to play with. That's right, so you can switch between different shapes on different steps, have it reset op optionally if you mm -hmm. want on different steps, uh, and have no, nothing play on a certain step if you want. And Let's have, hear that. Have a mute. Excellent. And then so but that's... The, but the fun doesn't stop there, does it? Fun doesn't stop there. So these are the typical shapes and they're cool, but something that often happens for me when I'm thinking about an arpeggio in my head is that I imagine a specific pattern. And it's a little abstract to deal with shapes because you're thinking of what, where were we and now where are we and what direction is this shape headed in what situation. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I just like the literal thing. And so what I've done here on the bottom half of this step sequencer is to make it so you can explicitly choose steps of your chord that will play. So in other words, one would indicate the lowest note of the chord is playing. So I might want the lowest note to play twice, followed by the next note twice, followed by the third note of the chord twice, and then maybe the lowest note again and the third note again. Let's hear that. Right. So it allows you to get exactly what you can kind of imagine, and then you don't have to do this copy-paste and, oh, and now this chord changes here. Um, you know, this kind of thing that happens to me a lot is I have some chord idea and I'm taking my chords that might be out in a, in a conventional sense without Cthulhu, have some chords and then I want to do something rhythmic with this. So now I'm starting to copy and move around notes and then I find myself, basically the computer's not working for me as a tool to make my life easier. Mm -hmm. I feel like a slave to it because I'm copying the same pattern over and over, doing sort of a tedium. Oh, now it's a new chord, but I want the same thing like this, one, one, two, two, three, three of the notes. Right. And, and uh, the result is nice, but this is sort of a shortcut to be able to experiment with different things. And God forbid if I copy something out and decide I want it slightly different, right. then you'd have to go back and change each one of your chords again and all that. So this makes it a little easier to just experiment around. And it's definitely a happy accident machine where you just kind of come up with something. And that, Even if you scribble, you can come up with things that are really cool. So what what is the next layer of this now? So next, Yeah, the next layer of Cthulhu is that you have these different tabs. So the tab that we're on now is called Note Selection. And this is just how is Cthulhu choosing what note to output for a given step. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the, where you sort of pick. Random selection really goes in conjunction with note selection. So you could think before it, Cthulhu is fully committed to outputting step number three, it can look to random, and random could allow it to nudge it randomly. In other words, different every time the step happens. Uh, so, so it could be the first note in the chord, the fourth note in the chord, the third note in the chord. That's right, and it will be a, a random depth amount. So how far away from what it should be, in other words, the third note. Is it going to be the second or let's, the fourth, let, Let's possibly? hear that variation real quick. Yeah, so here, I'll do a fair amount just so we hear it changing, uh, but just on this one step for okay. a second, see if we can hear that. And I'm going to shorten this down so it happens more often. Got it. Excellent. That can be, of course, a great way to let that run for a while, find a cool thing, and then and then you've come up with a happy accident that you like and can repeat if you want. <clears throat> now that all of you are wondering, where can I get this? Where do I go to get this plugin? Can you tell us? 
Yeah, so it's available on xferrecords.com, X-F-E-R records, all one word, which is my website. So you can find Cthulhu and Demo Version and Nerve and LFO Tool as well, uh, all there for sale. And the contact form goes straight to me if you have any questions. So you get <clears throat> Steve Duda support along with the that's plugin. Right, so that's right. That's what you're paying for. Awesome. Well, there you have it. Cthulhu, the new plugin by Steve Duda. Um, I'm very impressed by its ability to inspire in the moment harmonic ideas, melodic ideas. Um, I think, again, as I stated in the beginning, it would take someone years of study to develop this harmonic chord progression vocabulary. Um, and all you have to do now is go to X for Records and pick it up. I'm David Alexander with Icon Collective, the electronic music production school in Los Angeles, California, and one of our educational advisors, Steve Duda. Stay tuned, and uh, maybe next time uh, we'll bring you another surprise from Steve Duda. Definitely. Maybe a synth or something? I don't know. We're not really saying right now. <laughs> Could be. See you guys.